Good morning, dear students. I am Dr. Gopal Krishnam Gaukar, Associate Professor and uh, HOD, Department of Economics, Government Peshkara College, Tenkanodi, Uru Udupi. Uh, today, we are going to discuss about market signaling. Yes, you know, in my last two periods, that we discussed about two very important uh, problems. That is, one is adverse selection, that contains moral hazard. Of course, this is what the the reality, the adverse selection as well as moral hazards are the reality in every economic activities. Today, we are going to discuss solutions for that. It is given by Michael Spence. This is the Michael Spence model, of course. A very important model in uh, asymmetric information uh, market, market asymmetric information. So, uh, we will discuss it uh, step by step. Uh, Michael Spence is a Nobel economist. He suggests market signaling. He showed that when information is imperfect, signaling generates information about qualities of individuals in the job market. Whenever we are going to face some asymmetric information or imperfect, un imperfect information, that then he says market signaling is going to generate information about the qualities of individuals in the job market, particularly he is going to take the examples of job market. So basic idea is that applicants send signals to employers that convey information about their abilities for particular jobs. According to Spence, a signal is provided by education. This is the most important uh, signal that he picked and he is going to analyze on the basis of this education itself. And employers treat the degree as a test of basic abilities. They regard job seekers with a high level of education as a more productive and pay uh, pay them high salaries. On the other hand, those with a low level of education are less productive and are paid low salaries. Thus, employers consider education a signal of productivity. The thing is very clear according to Spence. If you have a very good, you know, very good in the sense, high degree, double graduations and etc, etc. If you have number of other degrees also, that you will be considered as more productive. And the person is having low degree, that means as for the knowledge point of view also, he is not going to earn that amount of knowledge. That is why automatically he will not be offered high salaries. So this is the basic idea before this uh, spends. So assumptions of the theories, there is a positive correlation between the level of education and productivity. That means if there is more education, the productivity will be more. High education, high productivity. Second assumption is the college or institute can test performance more cheaply than the employer. What they mean is, in the college automatically the students are going to interact and they are there for a year together. So, college or institute can test the performance more, you know, without spending more amount of money, very, you know, at very less cost. So, the employer will definitely consider the degree which obtained from that such of institutions or colleges. Greater ability means lower cost of education. If you are more intelligent, then uh, the cost of education is less. So, these are the very important assumptions that he has considered. So, I will come back, come straight away to the model. Suppose an employer faces two groups of job seekers in a competitive labor market. Group 1 are low productive workers with a marginal product of 1 who do not have a college degree. Please remember, this is the first group. Those who haven't uh, college degree, they are considered as less productive. So, marginal product is 1 here. Group 2nd with a degree having a marginal product of 2, say this, these things. Uh, those who haven't degree are producing one unit of uh, productions and those who have degrees they are going to produce two unit of products this is because of differences in their education levels one is having a degree another one is not having a degree the group one are not having a degree group two have they are having degrees spence measures education by a com composite index of years and education level then it denoted by y is going to uh, have uh, equations the cost of education of person group 1 is y and that in group 2 is y divided by 2. It means that cost of education high for the low productive group than for the high productivity group. Almost all half of the 
cost that is going to be incurred by the group 2 peoples. Yeah, I would like to explain with uh, examples also. Let C1 is equal to Y be the uh, cost of production of group 1 and C2 is equal to Y divided by 2 of a group of 2. If C1 is equal to Y is equal to 60,000 then C2 y divided by 2 is equal to 30,000. Suppose the employer determines the expected productivity or revenue of rupees 50,000 by employing group 1 person over their work lives in the form and 1 lakh from group 2nd persons. By identifying the two groups of job seekers, the employer offers the wage scheduled y's function of w is the function of y as w1 is equal to rupees 50,000 to group 1 and W2, I mean wage 2 is going to be 1 lakh to the group 2 over their lifetime. Remember, this is the most important things you consider for to decide uh, whether I have to offer for the job uh, for high salary or low salary. The education level is only signaling or screening device used by a prospective employer for offering employment to the two groups of persons. In fact, Education level is used as a signal for measuring the productivity of work, workers in both groups. So the uh, Spence, of course, is very clear in his idea. He is going to consider uh, education as the market signal. A person who is having good education is going to work uh, efficiently. The person who is having low education in the sense here he has considered degree, the person who is not having degree is not so productive, the person who is having good degree is a productive. So while appointing the employer will keep in mind the degrees of or education levels of the job seekers. So there will be uh, solutions for the problem adverse selections, otherwise uh, as far as like car markets there is a problem of the selections because the employer may not know exactly what is the ability of the job seekers so if they having a good degree i mean high degree then that automatically qualification then automatically he will be given good salary because as for the experiences or in sometimes the the uh, earlier uh, experiences the employer we have come to know that Yes, the person who is having good degrees are going to earn more, or in the sense he is going to uh, earn more to the company and the person who is having low degree, his efficiency is less. So this is what the main point he has covered in his theory. I will come back with the equilibrium, how he is going to achieve the equilibrium uh, in the uh, you know, job markets and how he is going to choose uh, the particular persons on the market signaling that is education. These are the things we are going to discuss in my next lecture. Right now, uh, I would like to say goodbye because uh, it will not be, it should not be heavier to you. So thank you. Thank you, students. I will come back with the equilibrium tomorrow. Thank you.